The gloves are on for this video because it's going to be quite messy. I'm going to be using a syringe to suck the ink out of genuine, brand new Epson ink cartridges. They're just a random selection that I've bought online. And the reason for this is because I've been using a continuous... Well, I've started off using a continuous ink system and indeed refillable cartridges in Epson printers and then moved on to the Epson Eco Tank, which is much more generous. You pay a lot more for the printer, but then you pay a lot less for the ink ultimately in the long run. So... The way I'm going to do this, I'm really just going to break the seal here, probably with a screwdriver. This is going to make a mess. Stuff the syringe in, and then just suck the ink. I really don't know how well this is going to work. Certainly ink is coming out. I chose cyan for all these for no particular reason. It's just quite a nice colour. So I don't know if there's a limit to how fast the ink can actually be sucked out of these. Now, there is a circular thing here. You may see that in the cartridge. Uh, that is apparently a one-way valve to stop you squirting ink back in through the, the outlet hole. Or is it purely for that? Or is it for other reasons? It's coming out in bursts. Um, it might be part of the operation of the cartridge, or it might just be to prevent people doing that. Now, is there also, because this is pulling a vacuum, but I can see lots of bubbles. The ink is coming out, but is there an air inlet that also gets punctured when you put this into a printer? I do see... Uh, seals under here, but I don't know if that's where they fill it. I shall keep trying to suck ink out of this and see at what point the ink ceases to suck out. I'll also purge the syringe of bubbles every so often. Uh, so this is going to be messy because I can see I've already sucked lots of bubbles out here. Right. So at the moment, it's looking fairly generous. This one looks as though it's pretty much had 10 millilitres of ink in it. That's not bad. That's more than I was expecting because certainly some of the previous cartridges have been pretty ungenerous. Right, tell you what, I'm going to pause while I get rid of this ink and then I'm going to try sucking more out and see if anything else comes out. One moment, please. Measurement complete. I measured 15 millilitres of ink out this and a bit of research online suggests that its capacity is 16 millilitres. It's at cost of one of these cartridges, apparently online. It varies wildly. I found one at £25 plus 20% VAT. Not cheap, particularly when you consider that if you go to the refillable options, uh, a bottle of ink like this, Epps Compatible Ink, is just a few pounds, if that. And that's 70 millilitres, which is considerably more than the 15 or 16 found in that. Okay, let's go into the next cartridge. This is a T0482. And my apologies if you have a printer that uses one of these cartridges and you're just watching me just suck all the ink out of them willy-nilly. It probably is quite traumatic seeing such a waste of money, but I did not pay a lot of money for these because I think these are older cartridges. So let's pull a vacuum in that and wiggle it about. This ink looks different. It looks kind of... Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just because I've been looking at uh, pigment ink as well recently. And it always tends to look a bit cloudier and more matte owing to the fact it is pigment-based. These are just uh, dye inks, I think, in these. The pigment inks are more prone to clogging printers, I think, because they do contain sort of fine particulate as opposed to the dye, which is super fine particulate, I guess. Not really sure. So here's the first dose of ink brought out of this one. I may... I don't know where the air goes in in these. I don't know if, when you put it into the printer, it punctures an air inlet to actually help with the sort of breathing, so to speak. Because I do see these little membranes and diaphragms under here. Right, tell you what, I'll go and squirt this ink into the uh, container and put it in the scales, then I'll suck some more out and I'll be back in a moment. One moment, please. So apparently the official capacity of this cartridge is 13 millilitres. I actually measured 14, but I was going by one gram per millilitre in weighing and precision scales. Uh, maybe just a little bit of tolerance of the ink, or the ink will be a bit more denser than, than water. There was a time that the ink was more expensive than gold. Is it still more expensive than gold? I'm not really sure about that. This cartridge promises, because I looked up the specs in this one, to be 17 millilitres. Let's see how we got on here. So I'm going to punch that again. Stuff the syringe in. And then just start sucking the ink out of it. These things are also chipped. I mean, Epson used to be one of the worst, most aggressively protective of their ink systems. Apparently, it is just a memory chip with a very low capacity. 
And uh, you do, of course, get the chip resetters that can actually, because the printer itself writes to the memory chip to tell it uh, how much ink it thinks is left. It roughly estimates the uh, amount used for each print job and then deducts it from the total, which is why sometimes it will tell you the cartridge is empty when it really isn't. But then they're not really transparent, so you can't really tell that. But you can uh, potentially reset the chips without refilling them, but I don't recommend letting your printer run dry. It's not great. It can cause problems. Uh, so this, this syringe, is this syringe absolutely full? I would expect to be if it does claim to have about 17 milliliters right to it. Oh, what? I'm going to, I'm going to do the, the usual thing. I'm going to get the little container and, uh, and I'll show you actually. I shall bring the scales through and we'll, I'll squirt the ink in and by squirt, I mean get it everywhere. The kitchen is a complete mess now. And we'll, we'll take a look at that together. One moment, please. The experiment is more or less complete. Let's zoom down on this set of drug scales and we'll put an empty container on and we'll tear it out. So that's showing zero. Uh, now it's showing a negative value because I've taken that off. We'll put the tub of ink on and it's showing 16.5 grams, which is about right, well, for say the 17 grams, there might still be a spot in there or it might be tolerance. So now I'm going to have to uh, get rid of that in a controlled manner that doesn't basically make my sink look worse than it is at the moment. So other things, you can get uh, officially refilled, well officially, it's not official, you can get refilled cartridges where they basically they rewrite the chip that it is full and they uh, fill it with ink and then they put a little bung in. This is clearly where they fill it and they've got a clamp that goes over like this with a foam pad that when they put it over the end here, um, it will basically seal that up until you're ready to use it. Uh, this, as I say, is clearly where they've basically, I don't know if they've drilled a hole or if there's a, already a hole there. Well, there we've got a cartridge. What version is this? Um, this hole here. So I guess maybe they just, yeah, I, there is a hole there. Maybe they've just punctured through filled it with ink and then put the bung in and then put this thing over to seal the output so it doesn't leak in the postage. Interesting. Uh, the other option you have is uh, the refillable cartridge as I mentioned. This one has a tiny little battery in the back of it, a little lithium cell I think and it's got a little microcontroller I'd guess and I think this is the type that if the printer's on and you unplug it from the printer while it's on and then plug it back in again, it can detect that and it will automatically revert itself to zero. And uh, I don't know if it has a separate memory chip that it writes to uh, ex separate or if it's all done by the microcontroller just pretending it's the memory chip. But in this case, you've got a little air bung that comes out here and you've got a fill port here that you can squirt the ink into, fill it up to your desired level, and it's transparent, well, translucent to let you see that. And then uh, you can put it, I'm trying to remember now, I think you put it into the printer and then remove the air bung. This was just for basically storage and uh, when you were actually filling it. Um, but the one I use now, I, I switched to a continuous ink system, which is a, a big, huge set of tanks that were external to the printer initially, but then switched to the... Uh, Epson EcoTank system, which basically is like a continuous ink system. It's got big reservoirs that you pour your refill bottles of ink in. Epson would prefer you to use the original inks. Uh, and certainly the uh, photo aficionados would also want to use the official proper matched Epson inks and uh, papers if they wanted the, the full Epson experience. But... Um, certainly, I, I, uh, I like the EcoTank. Uh, that one has printed an awful lot of, well big glossy pictures like this one that's currently in reverse engineering and uh, it's still going strong it's not cost a lot to run at all a bit more up front but uh, much cheaper in the long run so that is it uh, epson cartridges asunder and uh, sucking the ink out of them to see what's inside it was a worthy and entertaining well and very messy experiment <laughs>